Balloons, bazookas, boob, boobies, bosoms, boulders, cans, hooters, knockers, melons, honkers, jugs, rack, tatas, tits, torpedoes, guns, bust, doorknobs, coconuts, and our favorite one, the girls. Welcome to the All About Breastfeeding Show, where your host, Lori, highlights mothers just like yourself and goes beyond the surface questions and digs deep so they share not only their joys and happiness in their daily breastfeeding life, but also their pain and struggles and how they worked through them. Episode number 119. Welcome to All About Breastfeeding, the place where the girls hang out. I am your host, Lori Jill Eisenstadt, IBCLC. This stands for International Board Certified Lactation Consultant, and I spend my days helping moms with breastfeeding. This is the sixth in a series of 12 shows in which I answer your most frequently asked questions. Since this is not a video and I don't have a baby right now, this is not going to be a tutorial on how to latch your baby on, but we are going to be talking about latching your baby on. I can help you through sharing with you some tips about latching on and how do you know that the latch is good in ways other than practicing with your baby ahead of time. A good latch with a mom and baby that is comfortable is the foundation for good, productive, and enjoyable breastfeeding. What exactly does this whole latching on thing mean? And why do people seem so distracted with the whole latching on thing? Breastfeeding means many different things to people. The primary reason to breastfeed is to feed your baby. You will want to make sure your baby is getting enough milk in a reasonable time period and that this milk is transferred by your baby from your breast to their mouth in a nutritive sucking fashion that is productive and comfortable for you both. First things first, we are talking about breastfeeding, not nipple feeding. Now don't laugh. There are a lot of people that I realize when I start teaching classes, they think that breastfeeding is nipple feeding. They think that the baby is supposed to be latching on to the nipple. And this is one of the first things we talk about. I can appreciate why people think this though. I mean, most nipples stick out and it appears that they are like the target, right? Okay, so now that we have that straight that baby should not be sucking on your nipples, this will hurt you a lot and this will make it difficult for your baby to get the milk out. For listeners who have not had their baby yet and are looking forward to breastfeeding your baby, I want you to know that the first few times it may feel awkward to you. This is a very common response, having a baby suckle at your breast, something that you've never done before. I want you to know that it is likely it will take many practice sessions until you begin to find your groove. The most important thing that I want you to know is it should not hurt. Painful breastfeeding is a red flag, a big sign that something is wrong and this should send you to seek expert help from an IBCLC. Achieving a good latch means that your baby needs to take in enough of your breast at just the right angle that is comfortable for you and comfortable for your baby. Nancy Moorbacker, who wrote Breastfeeding Made Simple, she says that the comfort zone is where your nipple should be in baby's mouth for comfortable and effective breastfeeding. You can help yourself right now and find this comfort zone by just listening to me. So in your own mouth, take your tongue and run it up against the roof of your mouth. The part that is closest to your front teeth will feel quite firm. This is called your hard palate. And as you take your tongue and run it towards the back of your mouth in the direction of your throat, you will feel the roof of your mouth getting softer and this is called your soft palate. This is about how far back your baby should go in your mouth when they have a good latch. This is what's called the comfort zone. Breastfeeding is not really hard to figure out. However, it does take some time and patience, and you will usually benefit 
from having an experienced person show you how to do this breastfeeding thing. Most mothers have not seen other moms nurse or nurse newborns or really see the bare breast, the baby's mouth, and the actual art of latching baby on. This is something that's not paid attention to so much in our society. And we have our babies and expect this natural thing to come naturally. And if we didn't grow up with it, it's often a huge learning curve. One of the things I like for parents to know is it's really helpful for moms to keep babies close to them right after the birth. I do want to say that there are common positions that moms start off breastfeeding with. However, my goal is to not pigeonhole you or micromanage everything. I don't want you to think there are just one or two ways to hold your baby while you are breastfeeding. My ultimate goal for you is to be willing to experiment and yes, yeah, start off trying to breastfeed your baby in a way that just seems most comfortable for you. Perhaps you intuitively guide your baby on while you're sitting up in a chair with no other pillows or other items of support. Your baby achieves a good latch. You're able to maintain this position for the duration of the feeding and you are quite comfortable. Well, by all means, continue to latch your baby on in this position and just don't listen to what others are telling you about what they think the best position is or that they think you should know five different positions. If there's no pain, the latch is good and the transfer of milk is good and both you and your baby are comfortable, there's no reason to try other positions just because someone tells you you should know all the other positions. Stick with what works and change and experiment if it's not, and you will be fine. As an IBCLC, I might have some specific suggestions for you right at the beginning. There will be several things that factor into my suggestion when I'm working with you. Some things like how you are feeling. Do you have a lot of back pain, leg pain, arm pain? Do you have carpal tunnel in your hands? Perhaps you suffered some birth trauma and it's hard for you to sit upright. Perhaps your breasts are very large and literally sit on your baby's chest, creating a heavy weight, which causes your baby to be able to not breathe easily. No worries about your baby because he or she will take care of themselves. But what it usually means is that they will have a problem sucking for too long as they are compromised because of the weight on their chest. So I might have you change position based on my observing this. Sometimes your surgical incision makes holding a pillow a certain way more difficult for you. Perhaps your baby has a broken clavicle from the birth process or spent a long time in the birth canal at an awkward position and has slight bruising on their head or face. I will take a look at all these variables and help you find a position that works best for both of you. Again, it is not that it is hard to do. It is just that breastfeeding is not familiar to most of us. For me, I certainly know that for 100% sure, breastfeeding was totally unfamiliar to me. I had never, ever seen another mom breastfeed until I went to my first La Leche League meeting, and I was glad that I went before I actually had my baby. At the first meeting, there were about 10 other moms, and about half of them were breastfeeding their babies during the meeting. And me? Well, I went during my last trimester, and it's funny to think about this now, but I felt really weird about it all. I was curious, but felt weird. I remember trying to look the other way while talking to the moms when they were breastfeeding. I think I felt like that to look at them meant that I was staring, and it's not polite to stare, and I felt that to stare at a mom who was breastfeeding was offensive. This is totally all BS that I totally made up in my own head. No one at the meeting ever made me feel uncomfortable. Not at all. It's just that I decided I was uncomfortable. I attended two meetings before my first baby was born. And by the second meeting, I was a little bit more comfortable with everything. I was able to go with the flow a bit more and kind of sort of look at the mom and baby, but still not directly look at her and carry on a conversation. I imagine if I went to four or five more meetings, I bet you I would have been very comfortable with breastfeeding. 
It's funny when I think about it now, especially when one considers my whole workday is all about looking at babies and breasts and nipples and helping babies latch on. Ideally, you will really want to keep your baby close to you after the birth. Spending lots of times with your baby tucked into your chest being skin to skin will help you observe your baby and watch for those first hunger cues. And I say that what might sound obvious to people, but what I see a lot when I've been at births is the baby's born, mom gets to hold the baby for a few minutes, and then the baby kind of gets passed around to dad, to grandma, to grandpa, back to mom. And at least until you've had that first feeding, if at all possible, keep your baby with you. No passing around. By keeping your baby close to you, you're more likely to notice the early signs they give you that let you know they are ready to eat. Early hunger cue signs are when your baby just kind of begins to open and close their mouth, they begin licking their lips, they start to stick their tongue out. And if you can get to your baby at that stage, you will avoid getting them to the point where they are crying loudly, which then means that you have to work to calm them down before trying to latch them on. Some other points of interest that you will want to pay attention to. There are quite a few different positions, like I talked about before, that you can put yourself in and hold your baby in. So laying down is one, sitting upright with pillows in a stool is another, side lying, sitting up in your baby in a cradle hold, or we call a cross cradle hold or a football hold. There's also full body contact in laid back nursing position. My hope is that you have taken a good class and watched some videos to help you with this. Check out allaboutbreastfeeding.biz forward slash Skype to see what I have to offer you as far as help with breastfeeding beforehand. Whatever position you hold your baby in, there are some things that are pretty common that you would want to pay attention to. What you really want to do is place your baby in a position that he or she, if you're sitting up, has their head tilted slightly back so that their nose is aligned with your nipple. Another way of thinking about it is that your baby's nipple is pointed toward their nostrils or roof of their mouth. When you're holding your baby facing you, before you're bringing your baby onto the breast, you really want to wait for your baby to open up nice and wide, as wide as you see them do, when they're yawning. Once the alignment is good and your baby opens wide, you will want to bring your baby onto the breast in a rather smooth but quick and firm motion. With your baby looking up and with a quick motion onto the breast, your baby's jaw should land far away from the nipple. I find that when you move too slow, your baby has started to close their mouth and what happens is they wind up at the base of your nipple rather than further back on your breast. Their lower jaw is doing a lot of work of compressing the breast tissue, and that's why you don't want their jaws on where your nipple is, because it really hurts. This nipple compression causes a lot of pain after a few feedings. When your baby begins sucking, you should feel like your nipple is moving in a forward and back motion, almost a gentle tugging rhythm to it. That lets you know it's probably a pretty good latch. However, if you feel like your baby is clamping down on your nipple, biting, pinching, you have direct nipple pressure on your nipple, and this is a sign of a poor or a shallow latch, or you could also have a good latch, but they're not using their tongue exactly the way that they should. This is not good and you really do not want to keep feeding your baby like this for many days in a row without getting some help. Everybody here knows that I'm a strong advocate of getting help by the first, second, and third day to help you avoid getting to the point of extremely sore or cracked and bleeding nipples. This biting sensation, it will cause your nipples to get very sore and after a few days of this activity, the delicate nipple tissue tends to crack and bleed. And this, if you haven't gotten help yet, this is a very strong signal to call for help. Some things you want to avoid. Trying to aim your nipple into the center of your baby's mouth. 
This will prevent your nipple from going back in as far as it can, and this will cause more jaw compression on your nipple. Bringing your baby to your breast with your hands on the back of his head. Typically, when you put your hand on the back of your baby's head, you tend to bring their head forward and their chin closer to your chest, and this winds up in creating quite the shallow latch. There is actually quite a bit more learning about proper position and latch. We can only do so much in this audio version. I find that some moms just naturally get to it all on their own. Their babies achieve a really excellent latch and they are good to go from the very beginning. Others can pick it up by looking at a book or watching a video. Other moms struggle and struggle for days. And honestly, my best advice for you here is to not spend more than a day or two of struggling. Get help. There is more than likely help for you in your own community. If you cannot find the help you need, please reach out to me and I can work with you to help you with this. I hope you learned quite a bit about the do's and don'ts of good position and latch. With some good preparation and time and patience, you will soon get to that happy place of feeling comfortable for all feedings and confident in what you're doing. You are learning a new skill and you are not just on your own with this. You have your breastfeeding partner and you need to learn how to do this breastfeeding thing together. I look forward to next week where you can learn some more information about breastfeeding when I answer another one of your most frequently asked questions. Until then, bye-bye. Have you heard that Phoenix, Arizona is blessed with an amazing birthing center? Baby Moon Inn Birth Center is the best option for families who want access to midwifery care in and out of a hospital setting. You can experience birth in a comfortable home-like setting where natural birth is the focus. Laboring in water, being able to walk outside during labor, and enjoy the beautiful garden. This is what birth can be like for you. There is so much more to learn about Baby Moon. The staff would love to have the opportunity to meet you and would like to extend an invitation for you to attend a free Choices in Childbirth class and a tour of the birth center. All you need to do is call 602-314-7755. That's 602-314-7755 and ask for the tour dates. You can also go to allaboutbreastfeeding.biz forward slash podcast. And on the right hand side of the page, you will see a link that will bring you to the calendar and you can sign up for the tour yourself. When you come in for the tour, make sure that you tell them you found out about it from the All About Breastfeeding podcast, and you will be given a very lovely free gift.